Oh, baby! Hello, all you rockers and rockettes, everything in between. Welcome to another edition of And the Podcast Will Rock. We are the show that dives into the discography, the catalog of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, Van Halen. Now, look, I could ramble about Van Halen and my love for the music all I want, but why would I do that? I'm just a solitary guy. Or am I? I am just one of your hosts of the show, Mark Kamire, but with me always, as always I should say, is Corey Morissette. Corey, we were in the high 60s, low 70s today. Really? How about uh, you? Today today with yeah. the wind chill was minus 30. So I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> minus Oof. 30 sucks. I am so <laughs> sick of this fucking winter. Look, we, we, we had a we had a preview of spring today, okay? Just a preview. It will not last. I dare say when I get up early in the morning, as I always do during the week, it is going to be absolutely frigid, and I'm going to wish I never said anything whatsoever. So if it makes you feel better in the slightest, that's what I'm sure I have to look you know, forward and it, to. It really doesn't, and I'm going to tell you why. Because... Uh, about a week ago, <laughs> we had some decent temperatures that hovered right around zero, uh, which meant that our four feet of snow and everything Ooh. started melting, and we had water everywhere. And then it got really cold again. And when oh. water gets cold, I don't know if you know this being uh, from Tennessee, it, it freezes and it becomes ice. So now everything is a fucking ice rink wherever I go, and there's massive ruts because all this water and mud is just now frozen solid. So getting around anywhere is almost impossible. And I've... Slipped and fallen so many times. My kid uh, just fell the other day and hurt her shoulder. Everybody's fallen all over the place. I'm just oh. we're miserable. Like, if COVID was one thing, but dealing with this winter has just been a nightmare. Canadian winters, you get to look forward to oh. a little bit of snow, but a lot of ice and mud. Uh, but hey, look, I, I feel you on the mud part because sometimes we just skip winter and fall altogether and we have this little gray area season in between here in the southern u.s called mud um <laughs> and uh all of you all of you folks in the south who might understand what i'm saying but we can't compare weather patterns uh from here to the to great white north it is uh, it's aptly named over there but i just had to point out that we got a just a taste of spring it will not last it will go away i'm sure in the next couple of hours but hey it is what it is. Still, but we still, didn't come here to been, talk about the weather. It, it must have been glorious, though. <laughs> Even just a taste of spring. I know one day here it got to minus twenty, but the sun came out, and we were all so happy. It's like, oh look, it's the sun. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the sun in, in weeks. <laughs> it's. I'm so jealous of your taste of spring, my friend. The scare ball in the sky. Like, what is this <laughs> thing? Um, no, we did. We yeah, we got to enjoy the sun. We we you know took the dog around for the uh, around the block of the neighborhood, so that was nice. Uh, like I said, just a taste of spring. We're gonna enjoy it while we can before it just it is ripped away for the rest of the month because it's still February and February is still technically winter. So we just gotta grit our teeth and slog through. Uh, but you, again, you didn't come here to listen to us banter about the weather. You came to listen to us banter about Van Halen. This is what we're here for. This is what the show is about. Uh, but I got to tell you, you guys have been really active in participating with us uh, on social media and uh, with uh, with the listens, uh, with the banter on Twitter. Uh, I know, uh, Corey, we, we had some banter uh, going on and we had some some discussions on uh, on Twitter. Uh, anything you want to bring to light? Oh, there's, there's been tons of discussion. It's been great last week. Uh... I just sent a simple tweet. Uh, what's your favorite track from Fair Warning? And we had hundreds and hundreds of replies and thousands and thousands of people checking out that tweet. It was by far our most engagement we've ever had. And a lot of people love Fair Warning. Last week we did uh, Dirty Movies, which is a song we both like. Mm -hmm. It wasn't our favorite off of Fair Warning, but we both enjoyed it. And yeah. a lot of people actually picked Dirty Movies as their favorite. Uh, and then uh, today, uh, a fellow by the name of Tom Armbruster, uh, who's been listening to the show, and uh, has been giving us some great comments. Uh, listen to our Dirty Water Dog episode. And I uh, took umbrage uh, when we talked about uh, Eddie claiming he had to teach Michael Anthony all the bass parts and his bass solo during concerts. And uh, 
He's a big Michael Anthony fan. I just wanted to reiterate, Mark and I also big Michael Anthony fans. Um, uh-huh. and I, I want to shout out the Mighty Van Halen account too, uh, because th- th- they kind of came out and said, you know what? I think a lot of that was blown out of proportion. I, I kind of tweeted that in my life, I always try and live by the idiom that always uh, something in the middle, somewhere in the middle lies the truth. So when you have Eddie Van yeah. Halen on one side saying, Michael Anthony stinks. I had to teach him all of his bass parts. And you have Sammy Hagar saying, Michael Anthony is one of the top five bass players in all of rock and roll. Somewhere in the middle lies the truth. I, I lean more towards the, the top five. I think Michael Anthony is a great bass player. And um, a lot of people agree. Uh, I just wanted to, to clarify that. And I know uh, in earlier shows when I was a cranky old bastard, um, I, I talked <laughs> about uh, people coming down on Mike Anthony and people coming down on Alex Van Halen on their playing. And I just want to reiterate that really wasn't coming from me. That was coming from stuff I was reading from authors and rock journalists and stuff. And I was shocked how little regard they have for Michael Anthony and for Alex Van Halen. And Alex Van Halen is one of my top five favorite drummers of all time. The guy's absolutely amazing. I've loved every single drum pattern we've heard on this show. He's, he's been, um, you know, he's integral to the sound and to the success of Van Halen. But I, I haven't been very good at getting that, that point across, Mark. So I just wanted to take some time here today <laughs> and, and just... Uh, assure the listenership that I love Van Halen. I love Alex Van Halen. He's one of my favorites of all time. I love Michael Anthony. And uh, I'm not listening to the rock journalists as much. I know Chris L really pointed this out when we did our show with him. He's like, you know, you, you have my exact opinion of rock journalists. They're just absolute crap. Listen to musicians. And every musician I've talked to or listened to has said, Alex Van Halen is an absolutely amazing drummer. So uh, I just wanted to get that out there for, for Tom and for all our, our folks on Twitter who are saying, hey, maybe you're too hard on so-and-so or you're too tough on this, you're right. Alex Van Halen's great. <laughs> Michael Anthony's great. They're all fantastic. And I, I love this band. And I, I'm not going to listen to the, the horse shit uh, anymore and, and, and try and spew all the negative. We're going to talk more positivity, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's no reason to uh, engage in the negative. But, I mean, it's sometimes some discussions need to be had and uh you know i've i've been guilty of it i've talked about uh there are certain circles that i've been a part of where uh they did not have very good choice words about alex in particular but as you know i I told you off the air uh you listen to a lot of musicians and i listen to a lot of musicians who will talk about and they both i i've never heard any of them say a bad thing about michael but for the majority of uh the people that i listen to and run with They've got nothing but rave reviews about uh, Alex's playing. Uh, so while Alex is not my personal favorite drummer, or uh, I'd probably put him in the top 10, but he's not in my top five personally, uh, that does not disregard uh, his ability, and that does not take away from the fact that I think he is a solid drummer. I might have been a little lukewarm on him uh, before, but it doesn't take away my love for the band. Certainly, we would not be doing this show if we did not love the band and uh, the, the members of said band. And uh, and as I told you before we recorded, uh, doing this show has actually been pretty eye-opening to what the guys can actually do, especially Alex. Uh, it, I whatever feelings I might have had about him are, are completely gone. They're, they're washed away because I... Uh, Doing this show has been very, very helpful in uh, really analyzing his playing as well as well as everybody. Um, I usually tend more for the vocals and the guitars because that's just that's who I am. I'm a guitarist and a vocalist, so naturally gravitated toward it. But I am never going to say an ill thing about Michael Anthony ever. Uh, and Alex uh, is. I take back whatever maybe small negative thing I might have said where I went. Eh, he's I guess he's okay. Whatever. Uh, nope, that's gone. He is solid. He is, uh, rightfully in the place of a, uh, one of the best drummers in rock and roll for a reason. You know, you don't have to take my word for it. Listen to the people that work with him. Listen to musicians who are, who are well, well above any pay grade I might be. So, uh, look, it's all opinion based. We're just spreading the love of this band. That's, that's why you tune in. That's why we're doing it. So don't, don't get it twisted. You guys, we're not here, uh, shitting all over the band whatsoever. We love this band. That and, said, and Mark, <laughs> yes, I started cutting again, but the, go fourth, ahead. the fourth show of every month, we're going to bring people on and, and they're going to be able to tell mm-hmm. us, uh, on the air, uh, if, if we suck, if we got it wrong, if we got it right. Uh, I know uh, our guest in February uh, is a mutual friend of ours. Uh, doesn't really like uh, music, 
or Van Halen or anything for that matter. <laughs> so it's going to be a really great show, I think. I'm hoping we can educate him maybe uh, on the brilliance of Van Halen when he comes on next week. <laughs> Not to bury the lead, but yes, I, I <laughs> you guys very much need to uh, tune in for the next episode because we are all in for a riot. I if if uh, if if the guest in uh, the aforementioned guest it does indeed appear next week, that's that's going to be a treat for everybody. Uh, in all the right and the wrong reasons, but <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Um, but uh, like I was saying, we love Van Halen, and we're not gonna we're not shitting on them. But that said, it doesn't mean that they are immune to a few stinkers in their catalog. Okay, we've already done it. We've already gone through uh, uh, one or two of them, maybe. Like we're 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 pretty positive for the majority uh, in the show of the songs we've analyzed. But we've already been checking out the wheel. We already know that there are songs coming on. We've talked about it on the show. Corey especially has <laughs> particular songs he does not want to talk about, or he does, but he he wants to talk about them in the, the all the wrong re, for the wrong reasons. So <laughs> rest assured, we, we're we're uh, we're all equal. We're all going to be equal about this. So uh, speaking of these songs, before we spin the wheel, Corey. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular track you want to conjure or better yet? Is there an album? Is there a track from a particular album that you want to conjure that we can discuss tonight? Anything? You know what? Um, we, we had a great fair warning track last week, a great Dave classic track. I'm in the mood for some Sammy. Uh, give me some for unlawful. Uh, and if it's one of the songs I hate on that album, great. If it's one of the songs I love off that album, even better. But that you know, I've talked about how that's such a dyslexic album for me. I, I love it, but there's yeah. some tracks I'm just like, oh my god, what were you thinking? Uh, I would love to get <laughs> one of those tracks here tonight. Now, uh, it's been a, kind of a running bit on the show. Your girlfriend Christy has been manifesting songs for us. Does she have anything in mind for tonight's show? She is going to. Uh, she didn't say it out loud, but if I if I can guess, if I can take a peek into her brain, I'm going to assume she's going to manifest uh, the same track that she really wants to hear. Um, and I will reveal that track when we come to it. Uh, but until then, I'll just, I'll just, she'll keep it on the back burner. But uh, I know that she really wants, wants us to talk about that. Uh, and I have told her if we land on it, I'm going to have to bring her on the show and yes. we're, we're all just going to have to have a discussion. So <laughs> um, that's a track. And honestly, I think I'm uh, I'm going with you on this one, Corey. I think we need some uh, unlawful. Awesome. I need I think we need I think it's time that the wheel gives us one of those <laughs> tracks that we just don't want to listen to, because I think it's time we just have some real fun. And uh, if the song's bad, we just have to acknowledge that it's bad. Yeah, we've um, had a good run. We've or, had a good run of great songs lately. Like Learning to See we, was the last one I totally hated. So That's that's right. Yeah. And, and But honestly, from that album, there are some high class winners so oh, yeah. I'm, I'm down i'm down either way but i think yeah i think we need one from that album awesome so if you are ready then sir i will uh i'm ready all right let's turn it over to mr hagar do it sammy Here we go! <laughs> oh and we are gonna get now this one's kind of weird because it's off oh. diver down and it's Happy Trails. Now, Happy Trails, uh, of <laughs> course, is, it was kind of the, the uh, last song on that album. Um, I, I'm thinking maybe we should do two this week because that's a really short song. Is it? Yes, I, I believe it is. Because, uh, uh, like I said, it, it was just kind of the, you know, the, old, uh, the old Happy Trails. Uh, you know, and, and they used to end concerts, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, uh, with Happy Trails. But it's only, I think like a minute or so long let, let, let me just bring it up here a minute oh five yeah it's 105 you know what i think uh good call i think you guys this might be a, a double feature a surprise <laughs> double feature we may we may just have to do that so uh it's a it's a it's a quickie this song so i imagine we won't have a ton to, to say about it so i i think we can squeeze it in if i'm down if you are and there's really not much you can say about it because it's just happy trails to you. Like everybody knows the tune, right? And it was just kind of a, yeah. you know, diver down, of course, uh, for, for fans that don't know. Um, I, I kind of, uh, we, we talked about this before. Um, 
after Fair Warning, the band was kind of burnt out. And they wanted to get off the road and they wanted to take their time with their next album. Uh, but David Lee Roth specifically was worried that people would forget about him if they took a year off or six months off to kind of decompose, or decompose, decompress. Holy cow. <laughs> Boy, that's I mean, a slip up. Maybe also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, b- before the next album. So he suggested that they do uh, a cover song. To just throw out a cover there. And I think he really mm-hmm. wanted Dancing in the Street. And Eddie Van Halen said, no, that's stupid. That that doesn't really fit Van Halen. Uh, so Dave pitched, oh, Pretty Woman, the Roy Orbison classic. Uh, so Eddie mm-hmm. said, sure. So they Van Halenized, oh, Pretty Woman, and they put it out. And it became a surprise hit in 1992. Yeah. And when that happened, the record company went, we need an album. We need an album. So these guys had to go go right in, in into the studio and cut an album. Now, they didn't have a, a ton of uh, uh, material. So they had to do a, a whole bunch of covers. So they did a, there was another Kink song, I think, Where Have All the Good Times Gone? Um, oh, Pretty Woman, of course, Dancing in the Street. They ended up doing that one for Dave. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they did a Dale Evans classic, uh, Happy Trails. Uh, Dave was actually yeah. quoted, joke them if they can't take a fuck, Sylvie. You wouldn't believe the number of TV commercials and radio jingles this band can sing in four-part harmony. Uh, and that's kind of what <laughs> <laughs> kind of what they did here. So. Joke them if they can't take a fuck. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. I mean, look, we pointed out some of the things that Dave has sung and written and and said, and it's just it's it's ludicrous. Uh, that one might be the most like uh, stroked out ludicrous thing I've ever heard, but I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. God bless Diamond Dave. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what else did he say? Uh, I was nattied and weaned by TV. That's the babysitter around here when you're growing up to sit in front of the tube. You turn into a idiot. I remember all the commercials. We've been singing Happy Trails for General Airport use for years. And we wanted to do something wonderful and different for you. So that's a what video. we got. That's a, that's a good term. That's I, I, can, uh, I can relate to that. <laughs> Oops, that's not the right song. Ooh. <laughs> that was a little bit of Pleasure Dome for Sneak you, folks. Sneak peek. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I mean, hey, it might come up later. Who knows? So I tell you what. Why don't we listen to uh, Happy Trails, and, and we'll mm-hmm. do our brief little breakdown on that, and let's give the, the wheel another spin and, and see what we get. All right. All right. So a here. twofer. You guys are in for it today. Absolutely. Uh, here we go. A little Happy Trails for you from Diver Down. Bomba Dita, 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 they sound fantastic. <laughs> they really do. Even the Bombaditas. <laughs> I forgot that Dave does that. Oh, it, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's hilarious. Just, uh, I'm currently rereading a, 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 a Van Halen Rising, which, a tremendous book. I, I love this book. And, and I'm to the part where, Van, where David Lee Roth was kind of wormholing his way into Van Halen. This is back when Van Halen was called Mammoth. And... Mm-hmm. David Lee Roth had auditioned for him once and sucked, and they told him no way. They gave him a second chance. He came back and sucked worse, and they told him never going to happen. <laughs> and finally, uh, Dave's other band uh, had, had just kind of imploded, but he had a PA system, and the Van Halen brothers kept renting his PA system. And, and Dave just kind of kept worming his way in, and the Van Halen brothers realized, if we just bring David into the band, it'll save us 30 bucks from renting his PA system. <laughs> So we'll, we'll make more money. And that's how <laughs> David Lee Roth kind of got into Van Halen. And you notice he's not, you know, he's doing the bum ba da bum He's not out front, mm-hmm. le- you know, leading the harmony on this, right? He's just kind of doing no. it. Yeah. I, I just found he's that He's providing that, the bass line, the, uh, the mel- yeah, that little melody line. Uh, I do find that hilarious. And I'd be lying if I said that uh, keeping a guy in the band out of pure necessity, uh, isn't a thing i'd be lying if i said that because it most certainly is okay <laughs> especially in the younger days man sometimes you just had to make do yeah well uh we're, we're halfway done so we, we might as well finish it off here so oh yep who 
giggly about that too so you know good for them and honestly that's they sound really really good i i agree and you know this is one when i was setting up the wheel i'm debating like do we put happy trails on there but we kind of have to right it's they're, <laughs> they're singing yeah. it, it, it's a song like we said no instrumentals because those mm-hmm. are going to be kind of hard to break down even though we did cover eruption and and there's a couple others i wouldn't mind covering when we kind of get to its sister track like looking at diver down even uh, when we get to Little Guitars, I'd like to do the intro to Little Guitars, which is its own separate mm-hmm. track. Uh, so we'll do kind of stuff like that. But Happy Trails was kind of a tough one. I'm like, well, you got to kind of put it on the wheel. And here we go, show 14, and, and we spun Happy Trails. I guess we got a vote on it, Mark. Um, why don't you go first on this one? What do you think about Happy Trails? <laughs> Doing an acapella song is difficult. Uh, doing it well is even harder. Uh, this is coming from a guy who spent more years than I probably care to admit uh, in the choir circuits, including uh, you know quartets, trios, barbershop quartets. I did all that vocal stuff, okay? Um, and I can tell you that sometimes doing acapella of uh, four part harmonies can go very bad sometimes if you don't have uh, the right voices for it. And if you don't do a, a thing called blending, that's what it's all about. Harmonizing is blending. And the guys in Van Halen obviously understood the assignment and they did it. Um, and they very smartly, maybe it was even his decision. I don't know, but they very smartly said, Dave, why don't you do the bass line? Why don't you just like keep uh, you know the rhythm going, and then we'll we'll worry about the uh, uh, the other parts, and then you can come in and do your whole croon when we in the middle section, whatever. And he's probably like, uh, I'm good with that. Zoop zap doobity bop, or however Dave talks. Um, and so and it works. Now, if Dave had been attempting to do the uh, the lead melody or even the high part harmony three guesses as to who probably did that uh then i think it would have been a mess this cover could easily have been a complete mess but it wasn't it was good that those harmonies were tight and it was fun like it just it just i was i enjoyed listening to that just because it's like man i'm having fun and these guys sound like they're having fun even right there at the end when they all start cracking up like ha, ha, i can't believe we did that and it's like <laughs> yeah you did and you pulled it off so obviously that's a big thumbs up for me and a kudos on keeping the harmonies tight because that could be something that i would very much nag at awesome well i how about you Corey? i am going to say <laughs> I loved it, especially when, when you're doing an album that's like half covers. What a great way to end it, right? You, you do a, mm-hmm. a, a a classic cover of Happy Trails. And although I'm sure it's not like a one take thing, it sounds like a one take thing. Just the four guys got in front of a mic and, and, and just belted this out. And, and that's how they used to end shows. I believe someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for the, the classic Us Festival show in 83, I think that's how they ended it off. They, the four of them just got together in front of a mic on the center stage and sang Happy Trails. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> and I don't know if Alex is really known as a as a, a, ba- a background singer, but uh, he's out there too, uh, singing along. Yeah. And the, the four of them together, I thought, sounded fantastic. You know, Dave, uh, a- after I said it's kind of funny that they regulate him to the Bombaditas, uh, he actually had the, a, a little <laughs> solo moment there and, and sounded great. He did, yeah. So, uh, this is Van Halen at the height of their powers, really, on a throwaway track, on a throwaway album that almost feels like because they were kind of rushed to do it. Let, let's just do Happy Trails. Great way to end the album and a, a great way to start our show because we're going to go and do a second song. Absolutely. But, I mean, what a what a great intro for us <laughs> like to, to, get, to get to the nitty-gritty of whatever track is next. 
Oh, but Corey, we've never done this before. We've never <laughs> uh, spun the wheel twice in a single show. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how this is going to go. We might, we might actually get the, uh, the album at least that we want. Um, or we get something completely random like we just did with happy trails. I don't know. Uh, but I'm, I'm nervous and excited <laughs> at the same time. How about you? Part of me now is kind of hoping for a diver down song because then we can kind of fit happy trails <laughs> with another diver down song. Although the odds of that are astronomical. This wheel has been nothing but surprising in our first 14 episodes, it, my yeah. friend. So who knows? I'm going to shuffle it. I'd really be lying if good. I, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'd be lying if I said I didn't really want to hear pretty woman now, but, uh, <laughs> It's it is not up to me. It is not up to Corey. It is all the fate of the wheel. And you know what? I'm going to try and manifest something here because I shuffled the wheel, and we're resting mm -hmm. right now on uh, "Big Bad Bill," which is a song from "Diver Down." So from "Diver Down," yeah. We're we're going to spit it from here. So I'm just going to cue up Sammy again. <laughs> yep. Going to see see if this works. You see might this... you might have doomed us with this, but I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Hey, go! Yeah. Oh, and we're getting a song from a different kind oh. of truth. <laughs> so it's still a Dave tune, but it's from a different kind of truth, which has been an album, Mark. I don't, I won't speak for you. I've been really impressed with because I haven't listened to a lot of that album before we did this show. Mm -hmm. And every track we've done, I've liked. Uh, so, so here's another one off of a different kind of truth. Uh, do you know anything about this one here, Mark? No, I do not. I have. I would remember Chinatown. Um, I would remember this uh, this track, and I I am coming up blank, so I don't think I'm familiar with it whatsoever. So yeah, this is a, another track off of a different kind of truth. This is the fourth track off that album, and uh, uh, give folks a, a little bit of background on this album. I guess uh, back in uh, after Van Halen three uh, with Gary Sharon, uh, they were actually hitting the studio uh, to do uh, uh, the follow up album. Uh, which was going to be called uh, Love Again. And mm -hmm. uh, all those tracks got scrapped. Uh, as far as I know, none of those uh, tracks have ever seen the light of day. I don't think they were repurposed for this album. Uh, they they kind of went back into 5150, and it was actually Wolfgang, I believe, uh, kind of went through the archives and picked out some of his favorite uh, unused stuff uh, from the 70s to build tracks around. Now, the interesting thing about Chinatown, I think it's one of three or four that weren't. Uh, repurposed from a 1970s or 80s material. I think this is all uh, brand new. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe Honey Baby Sweetie Doll also uh, was a, a completely uh, brand new one. So uh, we're not going to get one of the older 70 tracks here today, Mark. We're getting one of, like, this is uh, brand new uh, as of, uh, you know, 2012 Van Halen. That surprises me a little bit because I, I feel like Honey Baby uh, Sweetie, or whatever, uh, was, it, it, to me, it kind of, if I remember correctly, felt like it was recycled. Um, and maybe that's just because it just had a familiar flair to it. You know, you get a lot of Van Halen tracks with a familiar flair. I mean, that's not a bad thing, but yeah, that does surprise me that that was one of the brand new ones, uh, at this time. Uh, and, uh, okay, well then I guess we're in for it with Chinatown. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this one. The heavily influenced by Wolfgang. I believe the intro is actually, uh, uh, uh improvised by Wolfgang, uh, uh, Ooh. Yeah, a little tapping technique that his dad uh, made famous. So uh, we'll, we'll play a little <laughs> bit of that. And He's like, was... check me out, dad. I can do it. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can totally do it. And maybe maybe Eddie was having a good day. He's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> Wolfie, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's see, let's see what you got. I, I was reading the uh, history of this album, and apparently Wolfie had a lot to do with the production uh, oh. and, and everything, right? Like he, he was the one that kind of worked with John Shanks uh, to, to get the album uh, sound out. Eddie just kind of you know let his kid run with it. So, Well, that's cool. That's way to you know put the ego aside i mean not that not that i'm I'm not suggesting eddie has a or had a humongous ego but, but i mean you know it's the band's called van halen it's named <laughs> after him and his brother uh for all intents and purposes the sound of van halen comes from eddie so one might assume, and you know we've talked about it on the show before that they've had issues with band members and deciding uh, uh, what they're going to contribute, what they can contribute, things like that into the whole, the Michael Anthony situation, all that jazz. So 
I'm it's it's nice to know that at least uh, Eddie didn't seem to have that opinion when it when it came to his kid, but then also that Wolfie was good and a good enough musician to contribute and and have it be so good that it's like oh well we're totally keeping this we're not even we're not going to record it and just go over it later like uh sorry Wolfie it's not going to make the final cut and apparently it did make the final cut so that's really cool to know and sort of a precursor as to what Wolfie would go on to do later. That's really cool. Absolutely. And actually it was, uh, well, that 2007 uh, reunion tour with uh, when they brought David Lee Roth back in, of course, Wolfgang replaced uh, Michael Anthony. Mm -hmm. But I think Wolfie really did a lot to rejuvenate uh, maybe uh, especially Eddie, right. And, and got him more interested. I don't think Eddie was ready. You know, was really keen on recording anything after Van Halen three kind of failed. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, no, not at all. So yeah. Uh, you know, credit Wolfie uh, for getting this album off the ground and really a, a, a good, like hard, like this is some of the heaviest stuff Van Halen ever put out is on this album that we've heard so far. Right. And uh, I, I don't know much about Chinatown. It's been a long time since I heard it. So I'm kind of looking forward to this one. What do you say, Mr. Kamire? We get into it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right, there, there, there's that, that tapping intro, Mark. What do you think? How does he uh, stack up to the old man? Well, he's definitely a Van Halen. There is no <laughs> mistaking it. Um, that's really good tapping, man. Ta you know, in the last several years, just, you know, speaking a, a slight digression, in the last several years of metal, let's just say, and I wouldn't even say rock and metal, but metal, a lot of guitar players are figuring out and utilizing the tap method one might even say at some point the tapping got a little oversaturated. Uh, I'm not one of those people, but there are some people out there. So, but there's, there's a right way to do it. And then there's a way to do it. That just seems to be like overkill. You know what I mean? Okay. It, it really doesn't reflect on how good you are as a guitar player. If you can do it, um, if you can do it tastefully, I think it reflects it. This this seems like uh, uh, maybe Wolfie was trying to make a statement to Dad or to to all the guys in the band. Maybe it's like, look what I've well, look what I've got, and if you like it, go with it, and if you don't like it, then to hell with you. I don't care. I'm, I'll <laughs> use it later or something. And um, no, man, that's that is straight from the the loins of Van Halen. If I ever heard it, <laughs> awesome analysis, straight from the loins of Van Halen. Man. I couldn't agree <laughs> that's the more. Best way I can describe it. And you know what? If I hadn't read that that was actually Wolfie uh, on the intro of that, I would have thought, hey, that's Eddie just tapping I, I, out a cool little intro, right? That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. it's it, if it was if I was blindfolded and had no knowledge of the song whatsoever, uh, I would have just assumed that was Eddie. That's a great way to start off the track. Let's keep her going mm -hmm. here. Oh, that I love that drive, Ooh, right? That, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we're in for it on this one, man. That's like that's a pure drive. I'm oh man, I'm I'm into it already. I I'll hope what, they don't let me down with the rest of the song. <laughs> we were talking about Alex earlier at the beginning of the show, and man, he is just playing the shit out of this song right off yeah. the hop. Lo love the intro. All right, let's keep her going here. We got Mr. Uh, David Lee Roth coming in now. All right. Uh, these lyrics are fantastic. Headless body in a topless bar. Warring clans in lowered cars. A buck is still a buck in Shanghai, and a buck is all you earn. A great night for all concerned. I tell you, Dave's bringing it. I, I, I'm not entirely sure what story he's telling, but I'm here for it. I was just going to say, there's definitely a story element that it sounds like to this. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of reading over the lyrics myself. Um, not sure sure how to yet interpret it but i i can i could probably assume well i don't want to assume maybe he's reflecting on an, an an actual event of his of his life in in a chinatown per se or uh you know what actually i'm uh i'm, I'm going ahead kind of looking at the lyrics here maybe maybe Corey, 
this is a, a response to uh, the movie Big Trouble in Little China. You think maybe <laughs> he's reflecting on Big Trouble in Little China. You know what? Now that you said that, that that's in my head. That's canon. He wrote an entire <laughs> song about Big Trouble in Little China. He's a huge John Carpenter fan. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that totally gives me big trouble vibes. You're exactly well, there right. you go. Yeah. I just, I, I hope, like I said, I hope, I hope the rest of the song kind of lives up to it now that this is canon in our, in our brains. You know what? I, I just got this picture of Jack Burton just, just driving around listening to Ch Chinatown by Van Halen. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Let's keep her going. What what is the Tong Underground? I don't I don't I haven't heard that before. Daughters of the Tong Underground. Um, well, you know I don't pretend to be uh, an aficionado of the the Chinatown scene, so I'm not. Yeah, definitely I'm not going to uh, attempt to pretend to be one. I don't know. I don't know if there's a Tong Underground. Uh, I can only assume maybe that's like uh, maybe it's gang territory, uh, something of the name. And I and I. And I sh I hesitate to use the word gang. I just, I don't know. I don't know what Dave's trying to say here. Um, but there you go. T uh, Daughters of the Tong Underground. Um, and uh, the, the, the ladies were vital in the movie Big Trouble in Little China. So yes. I'm, I'm going to assume maybe there's, there's a correlation there. Maybe. Somebody out there, if they know the story behind these lyrics, please reach out on Twitter or on our website. Let us know. Because right now, all I'm thinking is it's, yeah, directly influenced by Big Trouble in Little China. That was a, <laughs> yeah. a, a great comparison. But uh, look, how about Dave vocally? I know he gets a lot of crap uh, for how he sounded, especially live in this era, but on this album too. But um, I, I think this is kind of right in Dave's wheelhouse right here. Yeah, he's not he's not dragging it. He's not, And he's not doing uh, any sort of... Uh, over vocalization uh he's not doing a ton of what we're used to dave doing with the uh with the uh, screeches and the and the howls there's, there's still a little bit of it there because that's just his style but he's not overdoing it and he's he's not bringing the song down because it's this song is still a drive and he's keeping up with it uh so yeah yeah it's it's sort of it's different but it's but it's not it's it sounds like a more uh Mature Dave, dare I say. Very nice, absolutely. All right, let's keep it going. Welcome to Chinatown. Well, you've been out of Welcome to Chinatown. I, I just need to point out what Alex is doing there. I love what he the work on the hats there. Mm -hmm. And then down on the base, you're like, oh, that was fantastic. I, I just love that stuff. All right, gotta keep her going. All right, Mark, I think we're going to be coming into the solo here pretty soon. Your thoughts on, on that second uh, verse? Again, we got drugged into sin. We got two tribes warring downtown after hours. Like, he's painting quite a picture. Again, I'm I'm not quite sure what story he's telling, but it's <laughs> Maybe cool. he's just making it up off the top of his head. Maybe, maybe he... Uh... The theory is maybe he watched Big Trouble in Little China and then came up with a whole idea uh, himself and and made up this whole story. So perhaps there is no uh, uh, uh what is it Tonga uh, underground? Tonga underground, yeah. The daughters, yeah, of, maybe, the painted daughters of the Tonga underground. Right. So, well, okay. So so he's talking about like geishas and, I would think, and yeah. thing, things of that nature uh which you could there's some correlation i think there with some with big trouble in little china or he is just 
making this up on the fly or not on the fly, but he's just making the story up as, as a way of saying, if I'm going to write a song called Chinatown, I've got to make it believable. <laughs> um, and again, speculation, I don't know. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how to interpret this story, but he's telling the story nonetheless. I tell you what, in my head canon, uh, I believe I read that during the day, uh, the Van Halen brothers and Wolfie would, would go in the studio and kind of work out all the music. And then when they were done, Dave would go in and track the vocals. So in mm-hmm. my head canon, Dave's uh, sitting in a room somewhere watching Big Trouble in Little China while they're working on music. And he's just jotting down notes. And then he just gets in there at night and, and lays down this. And I think it sounds great. It's, it's not that unheard of for a uh, certain vocalist to do that. So I, you might be onto something there. That would be so cool if that was actually true. Can we get David Lee Roth on the line and ask him? <laughs> yeah, like whoever knows Dave, uh, tell him to shout out at us. Uh, tell us about Chinatown. Yeah, maybe Greg Renoff. If you're listening to the show, uh, fantastic author of Van Halen Rising, which is one of my favorite books. Yeah, get, get a hold of Dave and ask him, is this directly related to Big Trouble in Little China? Because it fits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm waiting for a song about the fog. When is that happening? Has David Ooh. done a song about the fog? <laughs> Maybe that's uh, that's for a uh, an earlier Van Halen song. I don't there know. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's keep her going. Dear God, like melt your face off stuff. Straight fire, straight <laughs> fire. It would not shock me if uh, uh, Eddie's fingers were burning. The fretboard for sure is on fire. Um, good God. Utilizing, he is all the way down. For those not in the know, on a guitar, on the fretboard, the further down you go, closer to the body, the higher pitch the sound goes. So he is all the way down there at the bottom utilize getting every possible note he he can and and he's just flying he's flying through it i wonder when guys do solos like this especially eddie i wonder if it's if they do it uh at a fast pace automatically or does he have the idea and go all right well let's hear what it sounds like slowed down so i can make it so i can make sure i get every single note that i want because you could fake a fast solo by just, you know, tapping your fingers real, real fast on the fretboard and plucking sure. at the same time and, and uh, you know, getting the result that you want. But then let's say you're asked to do like a, a, a tutorial on the solo. It happens all the time. Uh, uh, guitar, uh, guitar One magazine does that for guys all the time. Like, Give us a tutorial on how to play this. So I wonder if uh, he actually has to do it slow to make sure he's got every single note so that there's not something wrong, like a wrong note put in there. Because if you do it fast pace, even if he hit a wrong note, you'd never know. You'd mm-hmm. never know. Cause he'll go, he's going to make it work regardless. But I just, I, I always think about that. And, and if Eddie could do this slowed down, that's amazing because there is so much happening in this. solo. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, d- it doesn't take away from the song whatsoever. It's it, absolutely the solo that fits. And uh, he's just showing you uh, that he is Eddie Van Halen. You know, that, that's, is, there's not a ton I can say about it other than that. Well, and, and they did this song live on this tour. I, I believe it's actually oh. on the uh, Tokyo Dome live and concert album. Uh, so I, I'm, as soon as we're done, I'm going to go, maybe we'll even try and load it up here before we're, we're done today and just listen to how they do the solo in concert because uh, my God, and, I, and you're uh, you're focusing on Eddie. I was focusing on Alex and Wolfie. Man, were they ever driving that thing like Wolfie? Oh, it was his. The bass line on that was fantastic, and and Alex is just amazing again. He's mixing in some ride. I thought at one point, and and just uh-huh. keeping that beat, that nice little railroad track for Eddie to lay that solo down on. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, they can't they can't really fall behind. It, it's like I, I keep saying, this song is a drive, and it, you, there's no there's no break in the tempo really except for the uh, welcome to chinatown part of it but even then it's still maintaining the tempo mm-hmm. uh so if eddie's gonna do all of the what he is doing 
Alex and uh, and Wolfie can't slow down. You know, they can't, they have to keep bringing it. And kudos to the both of them for staying with it, man. This is a uh, yeah, this is heavy. All right, let's keep her going here. We got about forty seconds left. Mark. All right. All right. And a little gift. Eddie's like, here's an outro solo for you. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, I don't remember whose turn it is to go first. Who went first on Happy Trails? Do you remember? I believe it was you. All right. So then you can uh, vote first on this one, although I have a pretty good idea which way you might be leaving. Well, it might surprise you. Or it won't surprise you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, this, I, I was just thinking, this is exactly the kind of Van Halen song you want. It's, uh, you know, it may not be about uh, partying and having a good time. Maybe Dave is getting a little bit more, uh, giving you some more substance with the lyrics. He's, he's obviously telling a story. Again, now looking at the whole song, I'm, I'm still not exactly sure how to interpret it, but nevertheless, he's doing something different than what you, uh, Dave tends to do, or at least, uh, uh, for all their commercially successful songs. But this song is, is what you want in Van Halen. You want a heavy rocking drive of a, of a tune. At least I do. When I listen to Van Halen, I'm not above the love ballads. That's great. You know, but that's Sammy's thing. We don't, you know, we don't need to get love ballads from, from diamond Dave. He could do it and he has, and that's fine. But if we're going to listen to diamond Dave, we need something that just like really cooks this song cooks. I mean, I'm not even talking about the solo. I'm talking all the way through and you're right. You brought up Alex. I'm listening more to Alex and he's just running track back there in a way that I think, I, I, I'm not even, uh, maybe since hot for teacher where his drumming is really at the forefront. Um, just a track off the top of my head. That's, that's one song I know that is a uh, very Alex heavy. And, and I really, I appreciate it about that. But this one, Alex is just, uh, as I said, he's, he's keeping up with Eddie's he's got the, the riff, the riff is going and Alex is like, okay, cool. That's what we're doing. So he's just st sticking with it. The, the kick is almost nonstop. Mm -hmm. Uh, so good on Alex for that, because that's not easy. And then old Woofy on bass. So, you know, he's, he's got, I got the power of youth. You think I can't hang with you, dad? Let me show you. Let me show <laughs> you what I've got. Uh, yeah, no, this, this is a fantastic rock and song and surprising because I think, uh, if, if, uh, memory serves me right, uh, I was lukewarm on this album so far with the, uh, with the tracks that we've been doing this one might have saved it. I don't know how the rest of them are going to go, but this one has certainly, uh, it had my attention and now, or it had my curiosity. Now it has my attention, <laughs> so to speak. Um, yeah, no, I, I, this is, this is great. I love this track, but the question I have is Corey is the dream over for Chinatown or is Chinatown what dreams are made of for you? And you know what Dave would say? <laughs> yeah! Damn right. I love Chinatown. And I, I'm a big fan of this album. Like, I hadn't listened to it a lot when it came out way back 10 years ago. Uh, but as doing the show, this is now, what, the fourth track we've done off this album already? I've liked all mm -hmm. the other three. Really like Tiny Baby Sweetie Doll, which is one you didn't. Uh, yeah. I, and, and this is I, my favorite off that album uh, so far. One of the heaviest van halen songs i think they ever put out like name that another one that, that that drives as hard as this right like chinatown would be right up there um i echo all your sentiments the band was cooking dave was awesome uh there's really nothing to like about this one at all it's fantastic yeah it, it's it, 
like I said, this is the kind of track you want in a Van Halen tune. At least I do. And I've got no complaints whatsoever. Uh, I'm, I'm more intrigued now to explore the other tracks from this particular album. I'm sure with, uh, you know, <laughs> at the bequest of the wheel, it will happen probably sooner rather than later since we're already four tracks deep into it. But, uh, if they have anything remotely similar to the drive that Chinatown has, then I'm all in for it. And they might have uh, converted a new fan because uh, I, I may have listened to just a couple of tracks from this album when it came out, but it did not hold my attention. I certainly didn't hear Chinatown before. Uh, I must've just skipped that track or just didn't bother with it. I don't know. But now that I'm hearing it, it's, it, it's uh, uh, making me rethink so many choices that I've made in, in uh, my listening journey. So that's really what, cool. Uh, we, I, I have uh, the live album from 2015 queued up. Let's hear a little bit. I want, I'm dying to know what Chinatown sounded like live in 2015. Should we give a little okay. bit of a play here? Yeah, let's give it a little bit. <laughs> band's cooking right like that's yeah. fantastic sounds like eddie was the one that took that that intro this time in live i mean i would assume mm-hmm. Eddie does does it um it sounded pretty much similar i mean it, especially as soon as alex came in i was like oh my god that's al- almost record quality absolutely i'm just gonna skip ahead here a little bit and we'll see if we can get to the guitars yeah we gotta hear that <laughs> I mean, it was Wolfie when he came in with that bass. That was yeah. like, listen to you, man. Yeah. Uh, I look, I'm a big fan of the dive bombs. Uh, and if, it, if you don't know what that is, it's that uh, kind of that intro Eddie did before the solo where it's like, like literally sounding like a dive bomb. Uh, I'm a big fan of those. Very few bands can pull those off tastefully, uh, but it's Van Halen. So they, they're allowed to do whatever they want. Um, and Eddie does them really, really well. So right away, I'm a big fan just because <laughs> just, I love the dive bomb. Oh, that uh, what'd fantastic. you think about this? I, I loved it. Like, uh, I, in my memories of the Tokyo dome live album are, are not great. Like the band always sounds fantastic, but Dave's vocals are really kind of, kind of sketchy live in, in 2015. You know, he can't, yeah. especially on the 70s stuff, right? Like, you know, he, he can't do beautiful girls like he used to, or, or, or <laughs> Panama or anything like that. Right. But, Right. You know, he, he's singing Chinatown just like he sang it on the album, but the band is fucking killer. Like, the, the proof positive that even 2015, nobody could really touch these guys live, right? Like, the, especially, the, you know, the three of them. And you can really hear, I, I just had this mental image of Eddie and Wolfie just kind of playing off each other and, like, you know, trying to one-up each other during that solo, right? Like, Eddie's doing his bit. All of a sudden, here comes Wolfie. I feel right like up that's like, exactly what they did. Like maybe they're probably like facing each other, playing and in grinning that that uh, very familiar Van Halen grin that Eddie always had on his face, and I'm assuming Wolfie probably had it as well. <laughs> um, at least, I mean, if I'm playing guitar on this thing or bass, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Just just because that's fun. This is a fun song. Um, the content of the lyrics maybe not so fun. I'm not. I'm not really. Again, I'm not sure what Dave's trying to, uh, trying to say here, but, but the music's fun and, uh, it's Van Halen. And if they're playing fun music, you know, they're having a, a good time. So I'm having a good time listening to it. 
both live and the recorded or the uh, the album version. It's I'm really impressed with how this live uh, recording sounds of them doing Chinatown. I was a little apprehensive when you mentioned it because I was going sometimes. A, it depends on the day every every band's gonna have a bad day and um I'm, but a good thing they recorded on a good day because uh yeah this sounded fantastic you know uh, i just want to listen to the last 20 seconds see if we can see oh, what, yeah. what, what, what kind of big concert extra did we get on this guy <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what you got. You got Wolfie use, utilizing a little bass solo in there, a little bass outro. Uh, he's even got it going through the uh, the bass uh, wah pedal. Uh, so that's kind of funny. I think you were right. I think Eddie and Alex are both playing off of each other, seeing who could one-up the other. And and uh, <laughs> Wolfie's like, no, Dad, you're not going to show me up. I'm. This is my time. <laughs> but, yeah, that's fantastic. I love and, that. Nothing against Michael Anthony again. We're both huge Michael Anthony fans, yes, but yes. Uh, Wolfgang Van Halen, tremendously talented. Obviously, you know, look who is, you know, he's coming from a pretty good lineage of uh, of, of musicians uh, in his family. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet he's a pretty good cook too, uh, considering who his mother is. Uh, I watch a lot I of Food did. Network, so I see a lot of Valerie Bertinelli, yeah. but man, uh, you know, Happy Trails was kind of a fun way to start the show, ironically enough, and uh, Chinatown blew me away. I, I love this song. It's it's a rare thing that uh, we I mean, we're not used to doing two songs in one show, but I I would have it, it wouldn't have uh, surprised me if the first song be like, OK, we're both on we're both on board. It's happy trails. It's fun. It's an interesting kind of thing for them to do. Yay, we're, we're good. And it wouldn't have surprised me if the, the wheel decided, OK, here's one that's really going to divide the both of you. And so I was kind of prepared for that with, with Chinatown, but lo and behold, we got two uh, solid tracks, uh, very different tracks, yes. but we're both on board of this is rocking. This is Van Halen. This, these are prime examples of why we are doing this show. Uh, so I, I could not be happier about that. Um, and I, I assume you would echo those sentiments. You know, we went from this little four part acapella ditty mm -hmm. to maybe the heaviest song Van Halen ever recorded. It which really is a great is. juxtaposition of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Yeah, there you go. You want to talk about uh, how do you how do you define a band's greatness? Are they dynamic? And Van Halen is absolutely dynamic. I mean, even even when they uh, when you think they might go back to the old ways because they got their original singer back, so they might revert back to those uh, those days where the, the early Van Halen days, which a lot of people prefer, but no. You get uh, you get some you get so much uh, uh, diversity within, uh, and I think that comes within the idea that they have grown as musicians up to this point, and that's good. You need that. You need to evolve if you're going to be a band with longevity. You have to evolve, and you have to. I mean, you can maintain your formula as long as the formula you create works, but you still have to evolve and still have to maintain freshness. Don't believe me? Ask Rush. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, throwing that out there for you, my fellow Canadian, or and I'm not a <laughs> Canadian, but uh, my my friend, the Canadian here. You're an honorary Canadian. No, I'm honorary not. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be adopted one day, but we'll see. There you go. All right, so Mark, that's all we have for you this week. Uh, uh, it's my turn to throw to you. Where can people find you uh, online? Ooh, all right. You can find me at Mark the Bat on Twitter and Instagram. Find me there. Find me uh, uh, doing my things going on. I've got uh, some some gigs coming up down the corner, so hopefully we'll be posting about those. Uh, you can always hit me up and tell me uh, how right or wrong I am about these tracks that we're going over. Get involved in the discussion. I don't mind it. It's fine. Corey, where can the people find you? You can find me at CD Morset on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find us uh, at Podcast Will Rock on Twitter. Maybe we should start an Instagram too. I don't know. I'll, I'll get Mark maybe to head that up for us. We also have a website, www.podcastwillrock, where you can check out all of our shows. I hope to get Mark blogging about his uh, music career on there, hopefully very soon. And of course, that's where our merch store is. If you want to rock some uh, and the Podcast Will Rock gear, I'll be doing that at the Foo Fighters concert in Toronto this year, as well as a uh, Alice Cooper shows, Easy Top, a few other concerts. So uh, 
that's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, you can find us as part of the Deep Dive Podcasting Network, of course, featuring our friends at the Deep Purple Podcast, which uh, just had Chris L. from Pot of Thunder as a guest. They did a great show. Uh, Sabbath Bloody Podcast, Skinner, Greek and Sinner, T-Bones, Prime Cuts, Uriah Heap, The Magician's Podcast, Maiden A to Z, Metal Gods Podcast, Diary of the Man Man, Universally Speaking, the Red Hot Chili Peppers Podcast, Hawk Binge, and In the Lap of the Pods. Nice. Very cool. We love being a part of a, a great network with great shows like these. And uh, we're just happy to keep on spreading the word, the good word of Van Halen. That is what we're here to do. That is why we are the podcast that rocks and the podcast will rock and we will rock you later. Later.